Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to do a little uh, work on the Shores Universal Vice. I've had this for a couple of years and I used it on numerous projects on the surface grinder. But I got ready the other day to use it again uh, and realized that I had a major issue with it. Well, this mounted on the surface grinder or I guess you, you might could use it on the mill but there's a uh, bit a lot of uh, uh, opportunity for, for flex on the mill. But let's say we got it mounted on the surface grinder. You can adjust it in this axis. You can adjust it in this axis. And then the jaw itself, you can adjust even in the third axis. Well, I had a piece that I was going to put in here and mill a 45 degree angle on. And the three bolts tightened it up. I tightened one of them, snug it, go to the second one, go to the third one. Go back to the first one and it'd be loose. Snug it up again, go through the process. Went through that several times. And then finally I saw what was happening. The jaw was breaking off. The jaw completely broke off of it. Uh, this is cast iron, pretty, uh, looks like fairly coarse casting, but I don't know whether I put too much torque on it uh, or if it was just weak to begin with. I don't see any indication of rust in there where it uh, might have had a crack for a long time, but obviously this is not usable now. So what we're going to do in today's video is replace this jaw with a piece of uh, steel. I have a piece of 1018 here that's, uh, let's see, it's an inch and a half, inch and a half thick, which is a little more than that. That's about an inch and three eighths. And this is three inches square, and that's this is three inches as well here. So I'm gonna go to the saw, cut a piece off of this, three inches, uh, or a little over three inches, then we'll go to the mill and get it squared up. All right, hopefully the uh, saw won't drown me out. Uh, it's running over in the other side of the tin barn, uh, cutting that inch and a half thick piece. But while it's cutting, let's go ahead and take this uh, uh, jaw off of the uh, universal vise. One thing that's kind of confused me about this since I had it is that these adjustments on the axis are Imperial takes a uh, nine sixteenths. We're going to double check this thread here in just a minute to be sure it is an Imperial. But the three bolts in the jaw required a 13 millimeter. So we're going to check them out as well. All right, I'm going to turn around there to the vise and take this uh, stud out of the uh, <clears throat> out of the vise shawls. All right, so this is what's threaded in the, to the jaw. And I'm sure it's the same way on these other two axes as well. Then that fits in there. So let's check some threads. This looks like a fine thread on this end. All right, here's a half inch 20. And that fits perfectly. So this end of the stud is definitely a half inch 20, which is what the new jaw will have to be tapped. Now we look at the other end of this that's a coarser thread, looks like maybe a 5 sixteenths poss possibly. No, it's larger than that. It is a 3 8 16. So this is definitely imperial. 
So when we look at these bolts, which is what matches this, I think it's going to turn out to be a metric somewhere around an eight millimeter. Here's eight by one and a quarter. And that's exactly what that is. So I think in this rebuild of this jaw here, these are going to be tapped and this is going to be replaced with some type of an imperial size, probably a 5 16 uh, possibly a 3 8 but something to make this standard all the way. Now I'm sure some will say, well, why don't you just fix this? Uh, for number one, I don't have a way of brazing it. I don't have that ability, even if I did have the tools to do it. I've got that piece of 1018 that I can make a jaw out of. I may hang on to this. Uh, if some of the other folks, YouTube channels that uh, do this type of brazing, looking for a project someday, I'll send this to them and see if they can put it together. I'm going to go check on the saw now, and uh, then again, we'll meet you over at the mill to start squaring that piece up. All right, I've got the piece uh, sawed off. That was took quite a, few, quite a little bit of time, uh, just simply because of a small saw, inch and a half thick piece of material. Let's uh, get the shower curtain pulled just so I don't sling chips all over my desk over there. I don't think we'll need to cool it for this. And what I'm going to do is dress off this saw in. This is being cold roll. It doesn't have a lot of mill scale on it. It doesn't have any mill scale, obviously, being cold roll. So it's got clean sides over here, clean uh, top and bottom. And the saw cut over here, uh, I'll probably clean it up too as well, but what I want to do is get my saw cut uh, cleaned up. Once I get my saw cut cleaned up, then we'll uh, we'll see how much material is left. Is you know, if there's enough material, I'll turn it around and get the uh, the saw cut from the seller. <laughs> All right, that appears to be cleaning up all the way, so we're going to put a little cutting oil on there and take it all the way across. All right, that was conventional milling, of course. So what I'm going to do now is advance about, let's say, five thousandths and do a climb mill just as a final dress. All right, let's see. Okay, I think I might have lost the audio on that or I didn't turn my microphone on. But all I did was uh, clean this end up right here uh, to get a good, good smooth surface. I'm going to turn it around now and do the same thing to the uh, saw cut on the other side. Uh, then we'll, I'll carry it to the workbench, lay out the center, and after that, I'll meet you over at the uh, lathe. We're going to put it into four jaw chuck and turn this. Uh, uh, this bevel, if you will, to knock the uh, sharp edges, sharp corners off. So I'll meet you over there shortly. I've got the uh, block squared off now. I'm going to mount it in the uh, three or four jaw chuck here on the lathe. And again, the purpose of doing this is to round off these corners a little bit. I've got a backing plate in there now. Alright, 
Now I'll get everything set up here in just a second. Well, what I'm going to do is use a uh, dead center. And up against that will be, of course, the tailstock. And I'm just going to keep working this until I get that, until I get it centered. All right, I think I've got it centered good enough now. That's within a thousandth, maybe a thousandth and a three quarters of a thousandth. Put that in perspective again, that's about a fourth of human hair. So I'm going to get this compound turned around, get it set up again to, uh, knock this corner off. Okay, as best I could tell from looking at the uh, original here, it's about a 30 degree angle. That's what I've got the compound set at. And I've got the lay set up in reverse. It's just easier to get to the handle in this direction than it is back over here. So, lathe is in reverse. If you hear any, sounds like something bouncing around, this spacer block I got back here may work a little loose, but it should be fine. All right, as you can see, what we're doing is taking this corner off, taking these corners off at each location, and I'll probably do that. The original did that until the uh, edge came out it blended with or it blended with the edges i'll see how long it or how far it takes to to clean those corners up Looking pretty good. I'm going to re, uh, realign the uh, or reset the uh, the way the tool is addressing the work here to get a little straighter. I'll bring you back when we get a little closer. Okay, we're getting much closer now to uh, to this being rounded right at the uh, uh, outside edges, but we're not quite there yet. So we'll take keep taking a f few more cuts. All right, and I've run out of travel on the compound now. So I'll advance that back in, come in here. I think we're ready to make a cleanup pass now, just, and all that's going to be is the the same thing I've been doing, but just going to take maybe about ten thousandths and take it real slow. I'm really happy with that. Get this out, deburr it. Then we're going to go back over to the mill. And I think the next thing we're probably going to do, oh, let's see. I think the next thing we'll do before we try to drill and tap that is go ahead and cut out the, uh, uh, what will be the opening to hold the workpiece to make this literally two jaws. Okay, I'm over at the mill now. We've got the uh, bevel finished up on the lathe. We've got the piece uh, mounted in. And I went over to the workbench and used some dicum and went ahead and laid out. And I didn't try to video that because that's simply, uh, I kept the same dimensions of the uh, broken uh, vise. The only thing I did different, I went just a little bit deeper here because for the, for the clamping bolts, I'm going to take these metrics out and put the uh, uh, 3 8 bolts in. Uh, that way everything will be imperial. This is about 60 thousandths larger than the metric that was in there. So I make, I'm going to make the 
depth about 60 thousandths deeper just simply so that I've got a consistent amount on each side of the screw when I uh, when I drill and tap these sides. So we're going to start out now. Let's see. I'm just going to take whatever is comfortable. I'll zero out there. I'm using a roughing end mill to start with. I'm going to start with a hundred thousandths. I think it'll take plenty more than that with this roughing end mill. Alright, let's get the coolant on there. See if I can get it somewhere over here that won't be in line of the camera. I'm going to try the uh, power feed on this and see if it's got enough power to push through this. What I'm going to do is attempt to get down to my depth on each side of the uh, trough and then I'll take the middle out. All right, I'm going to continue this process. until I get a whole lot closer and then I'll bring you guys back. Okay, I've got both sides to depth now. I'm going to see if I can't take this center out, maybe in two passes. We'll leave it at full depth. I do love using these roughing end mills for jobs like this. All right, I'm going to get a few of the chips cleaned up here. I'm going to replace out that roughing end mill with the finishing end mill and come back and we'll clean up the edges. Got a finishing end mill in there now. And again, all I'm going to do is mill to my scribe line. This is nothing that has to be a precise measurement in here, but I'm going to mill down this side, step across to the other side, and then clean up that edge. This is the kind of work that produces them tiny little needles. So if they get in your clothes, they'll haunt you forever. Alright, I'm very happy with that. I'm going to take this out, deburr it some, set it up with the drill chuck, and then we'll drill and tap our three holes for the, for the locking bolts. I've got it turned up on the edge now, and I've got the three bolts laid out. And again, we're going to use the 3816 this time. So I've got the center or spotting drill in, and I, I laid these out. Uh, same distance they were on the original, 
which this just happens to be 860 thousandths between each side of center. I'm going to see if this will power tap. I'm going to quite do it. That's okay. It's got a good start. So we'll put the wrench on and finish it up. All right, that's one of them tapped. I'm going to do the other two the same way. Now I'll bring you back when we get ready to uh, drill a pivot hole in the bottom. Okay, if you recall, the hole in the bottom of the original was a half 20. So using the same center mark that I used uh, to line this up in the four jaw chuck, I'm going to use that same center mark to spot drill and drill with the 2964. Again, this is a 2964, which is the uh, tap drill for uh, half 20. Pretty sure the jaws in my chuck, drill chuck, are worn out, and that comes directly from letting hard steel like a tap slip in there. All right, I know this is not going to power tap, especially, well, for no, two reasons. Number one, it's half inch. Number two, the only half 20 I've got is a bottom tap. So it's not going to want to start all that simple in, or all that easy in there. But I'm going to get it started, hopefully. Then we'll manually tap it. Okay, now I'm going to put the spring-loaded tap guide in uh, to keep it lined up straight. And we'll put the tap wrench on. Tap seems to be pretty sharp. All right, I think we've got one more thing to do before uh, we put this back together or put it together. Actually, there's two things. One, I need to scribe some lines on the side here to line up with the protractor that's on the uh, vise itself. But the other thing I want to do off camera is carry this over to the surface grinder and simply clean up this, this bottom. This is the only surface that will come in contact with anything else. So I'll do that. Then we'll meet back over on the workbench and put everything together and cap this video. Okay, one more thing I didn't think to mention that we need to do is turn the end down on our new locking bolts. You see at the end of the uh, metric ones that were in there that we we're taking out were turned down. So I'm going to do the same thing to this. Uh, turn it down enough to take the threads off for about two hundred thousandths and face off the end. So let me get this loaded in a collet and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got one of our locking bolts uh, mounted in a uh, three-eighths collet now and in the collet block. We'll put that in the chuck. Okay, 
Then we're going to face off the end. All right, I'll zero out the Z-axis on the DRO right there. Come in about, about 200,000, so it really doesn't matter. The three is turned off the end of that, so it'll make a good uh, mating surface. I'll do the same thing to the other three, and then we'll be ready to wind this video up. Okay, I think we're ready to wind up this uh, video on replacing the broken jaw on this Shores Universal Vice. I looked around in my paint uh, supply and actually found this uh, Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer in one satin nickel. And you come out pretty close. Uh, this is what I use for my Y2.02K uh, toilet paper holder. But we're ready to put this together now. Let's see if we can uh, put a little bit of lubricant between the two surfaces. And before I painted it, I did go over to the surface grinder and surface grind surface ground this mating surface and then uh, put the, uh, the mounting stud back in. That gets a washer and hopefully you can see right here on each of the four sides of this replacement jaw up here I scribed a line dead center on each of the four to line up with the protractor that's on here. So that's in there now. And unlike before where I had a metric wrench to tighten these and an imperial wrench to loosen and tighten these, I have one 9 16 now to do it all and got a new jaw up here that I think is probably going to be even better than the original one. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.